Google Search Console is one of the most used tools in my stack. If I want to research what kind of content should I create next, I can open its interface and look for ideas. However, the interface has its limits and shows only the top 1000 search queries, which is not great. As an alternative, you can use a Google Sheets plugin that fetches the data directly from the Search Console API. It's definitely more powerful and with it, you can fetch the top 25,000 results for free. But what if you want to get more data and not to worry about the expiration date? That's where Google BigQuery can become very useful. You can link Search Console with BigQuery, and then with fairly simple queries, you can work with the raw data. So in this video, I will show you how to connect Search Console with BigQuery. And in the next video, I will show you how to query that data. Before we link Google Search Console with Google BigQuery, first I wanted to show you what that data export looks like, and maybe it will just give you a better idea. So here I am in my Google BigQuery project, and here in the Search Console, I have Search Data Site Impressions, and here I can click Preview to see the preview of the data. So for each keyword, for each day, there is one record in the table. This is the country, the type of the query, the device type, is that query anonymized or not? For example, in the interface of Search Console, all anonymized queries, they are not displayed. In the sample queries that I will share in my future video, we will also be excluding the anonymized queries. And I don't remember when exactly I linked this, but I think it was more than a year ago. And here we can see how many records do I have in this table. So as I've said, for each keyword and each country and device category and the type, there is one record. And right now I have almost 30 million rows in this particular table. When you link Google Search Console with BigQuery, historical data is not exported. Export will apply only to new data that is being collected. Therefore, a tip here would be to connect Search Console with BigQuery as soon as possible if you plan to use this data. Now let me show you how to link Search Console with Google BigQuery. Here I have logged in with a different email, so BigQuery was never used here. First of all, go to console.cloud.google.com. I'm not sure what exact window or screen will you see, but in general you should go to BigQuery, then click here. And now it asks me to enable the BigQuery API. So if you are asked to enable certain APIs in this process, then definitely do that. I will click enable. And then once that is done, eventually I will be moved to the BigQuery interface. Although I just realized that I am in a wrong project. So maybe I will create a new project just for this video. So click new project, then maybe this could be named Google Search Console BigQuery demo. Then you should select your billing account. Storing data in BigQuery does not cost much, but if you will be querying your data a lot, then of course you might hit certain limits, which means that you might start paying at some point. Therefore, I will just select the billing account. Then let's select the organization. I will select no organization and then click create. So the project is being created. Then I will select that project. And since I have already enabled the BigQuery API, I just go here. I mean, I'm redirected right here. For this to work, you will also need to enable another API, which is called BigQuery Storage API. So in the search here, you can enter APIs and services, click here, and then look for the BigQuery Storage API. Click it. And here I see the option to disable API. So it means that it is actually enabled, which is exactly what we need. Then we need to configure certain permissions, which will allow Google Search Console to dump data into the BigQuery project. That's why in the search, we will enter IAM and admin. So let's select this, then click grant access. And here we will need to add principles. In this field right here, we have to paste this exact email. By the way, I will post a link to the documentation below the video where these steps are also explained. But adding email is not enough. We also have to assign certain roles. The first role right here, so you should click it and then enter BigQuery job user. So select that and then add another role, which is BigQuery data editor right here. And then click save. 
then you should go to your search console project or property, whatever you call that, and look for settings. Then go to bulk data export. And here, if you click this button, you will see the instructions and I will post the same link below the video. So these are the steps that you will need to complete. And for example, these steps are already configured because that's what I showed you in this video. So now we are looking at these steps right here. So we have already done the first step. Then the second step. Here we have to enter the cloud project ID. You can get it by going to Google Cloud, then selecting this picker, and then this is the ID. So make sure that you have selected the correct project. I mean that you're copying the correct project ID. So I will copy it, paste it here. Then you can change the name of the data set. Usually I keep this as it is, search console. And then you can change the location of the data set. For example, I will choose Europe. And then click continue and then set up export. And eventually you will see the success message and it says that the data will start coming in within the next 24 hours. Because keep in mind that the data in Search Console always has a two day delay. Therefore, for example, if you have a BigQuery project where you're already getting data from Search Console, you will not have today's or yesterday's data the newest data that will be available is from two days ago. And as I've said, historical data is not important. And that's pretty much it when it comes to connecting Search Console with BigQuery. If you're wondering how much will this cost you, I mean, just the storage, it will not be much. For example, in my case, I found that I connected my Search Console to BigQuery exactly two years ago. So I have two years of data. And as you've seen, there were like, 30 million records, but if I go to, let's say this table and then go to details, I see that the total size of this particular table is three gigabytes. So I have active logical storage and then long-term. And according to the pricing, the first 10 gigabytes of the long-term storage are free. And then the first 10 gigabytes of the active physical storage also is free. And then each additional gigabyte costs from four cents to one cent. Although, sorry, I will need to select a different region. So let's say Europe, and these are the prices. So in my case, I have two tables, two years worth of data. And here I am not exceeding the limits, but the next table here, I am exceeding the limits. And of course we should combine those numbers. So in this case, the active logical bytes, I am not exceeding that total limit of the first 10 free gigabytes. So that is still free for me. But the long term logical bytes here, I am exceeding that free tier limit. And of course, if we combine this with those other gigabytes right here, so it looks like I'm three or four gigabytes over the free tier limit, which means that I am paying like five cents per month or something like that. Of course, there's also a compute pricing, which means that the more you query your data, the more you will be paying, but that is very individual. And for some people, it will still not cost anything because there is a free tier for other businesses, it might cost some money. And speaking of the compute pricing, the first tibibyte is free. Think of this as a bit larger than one terabyte. So that's, I think, is a pretty generous limit, of course, unless you're working with a lot of data or you're planning to work with a lot of data. When you will be querying data in BigQuery, you will see the preview of how much memory will that particular request require. But more on that in the next video on this channel. And that is how you can connect Google Search Console with BigQuery. Now, you should learn how to query that data, and I will explain this in my next video. You will find the link to it below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics or occasionally about BigQuery, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.